Good afternoon. My name is Valerie Romulus, and uh, I will be presenting on uh, the Port of Los Angeles as well as the Port of Long Beach. Uh, I will speak about both ports, and uh, after each, I will include a, a couple videos to show a broader picture of. Uh, each port and what they do as far as operations. Uh, I would like to start with the Port of Long Beach. It was founded on June 24th, 1911. It is located right at the mouth of the Los Angeles River. As of today, the port includes more than 7,600 acres of war state of the art cargo terminals, roadways, rail yards, and shipping channel. Today it is one of the most busiest ports in the world. It became a deep water port in 1926. Uh, there also was an oil drilling operation. It is the first port in the Western Hemisphere to include radar systems. Uh, the port currently moves approximately $180 billion worth of goods. It is a premier gateway for the Trans-Pacific trade. It is connected to 217 seaports worldwide, and uh, nearly half of the car cargo is moved onto rail to the rest of the country. Uh, those cargoes make it to the other uh, coast of the
the second video will be uh, depicting the a day. The video is called A Day in uh, the Port of Los Angeles. And it will be talking about the procedure of uh, the container being moved from the ship onto railroads and, uh, and trucks. And we'll be talking about the logistics and uh, how they came to optimizing the logistics as far as transport. So in other words, they will be talking about the transporting of the goods once they get off the ship onto the port onto the trucks and trains to the final destination. There's been a lot of misinformation floating around about how long it takes to pick up or drop off a container at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Some members of the trucking community continue to claim that typical turn times are two to three hours. That is simply false. The average in-terminal turn time across the 13 terminals in the ports during August 2013 was 39.6 minutes during day shifts and 40.3 minutes during night shifts. No system can eliminate all lines. From congested freeways during rush hour to movie ticket queues on a Friday night, lines form when everyone tries to use the same infrastructure at the same time. The terminals are no different. During most of the day and night shifts, there was little or no congestion at the terminals in the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Truckers can reduce their turn times by moving containers during the 10 or so hours when lines are short and by taking simple steps to avoid trouble tickets. This is a day in the life of the terminal gates at Usin Terminals at the Port of Los Angeles. What you're seeing now is trucks lining up before the gates open for the day, creating a backlog. That backlog clears up quickly once the gates open. Usin, like many other terminals, hires extra labor to open the morning and night gates an hour early. This is what the terminal gates look like for 10 or so hours a day. Short lines and very quick service for arriving trucks. These quiet hours are common across most terminals in the ports. As we approach midday, traffic gets heavier. Trucks arriving at 11 get through the gates by around 11.30. From around 12.15 to 1.50 is the contractually mandated lunch break. As the lunch hour ends, the gates reopen. By about 2.30, traffic has lightened up and arriving trucks are waiting 25 to 30 minutes in queue. This video was taken in July 2013, when gates were closing early due to the sequester. Though the off-peak shift doesn't begin until 6, Usin and many other terminals hire extra labor to open the gates an hour early. The start of the off-peak shift at 6 p.m. is the busiest part of the day. Truckers can achieve faster turn times by avoiding arrival at the start of the shift. The backlog is cleared by about 7.15. Trucks arriving between 7.15 and about 10 p.m. have virtually no wait times. Across the two ports, the terminals receive light traffic during the majority of the off-peak shift. Traffic increases a bit at the start of the 10 p.m. second shift lunch break, but then quickly picks up velocity again. From 11.30 p.m. through 2 a.m., drivers face minimal queue times. Here are some key facts about turn times. In 2011, the ports, terminals, and trucking community published a comprehensive turn time study at the ports using GPS to track trucks. The study found the medium wait time outside the gates was 20 minutes. Only 9% of waits and queues outside the gates were more than an hour. Only 3% of visits took three hours or more, including queue time and terminal time. Our terminals are some of the most productive in the world. A Journal of Commerce report in July 2013 named the Port of Long Beach the most productive port in North America. The terminal operators understand that turn times are an important issue for the trucking community. We are committed to working together to continue moving cargo efficiently through the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Now let's talk about the port of Los Angeles. It is the other port. It is almost adjacent to the port of uh, Long Beach located at the same estuary uh, at the uh, mouth of the river of Los Angeles. Uh, it is located in the state of Los Angeles in Southern California. Um, all this documentation did back to 1542 when uh, Portuguese explorer named uh, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo used the arbor to settle. They called it 
smoke harbor due to the smoking of the Native Americans who were living up the hills. Uh, the area was desolate until about 1769 when the first Spanish officials and missionaries settled in the area. Speaking of the southwest coast of what is today known as the United States. Uh, formerly, it was known as San Pedro Harbor. It was used as a trading post by the Spanish monks. First American ship to dock at San Pedro was the Lydia Bird in 1805. Originally, trading with other countries was illegal, but due to the distance of Spain from uh, California, today California, uh, the law was ignored. In 1822, Mexico lifted the ban. Uh, by the time California joined the Union in 1848, the business was already blooming. With the support of Senator Stephen White, San Pedro Harbor became the official port of Los Angeles in 1897. In 1907, the port was officially named Port of Los Angeles and became an official department of the city in 1909. Various industries flourished in and around the port, including fishing, canneries, oil drilling, and shipbuilding. By 1912, dredging and widening operations were taking place in the goal of enlarging the port to accommodate for larger vessels. The Port of Los Angeles holds a unique strategic position along uh, position for international trade. Its distance to the P Panama Canal gives the Port of Los Angeles an advantage over its northern uh, counterparts when it comes to east to west trading. Uh, going from Southern California to the eastern seaboard or to the Gulf Coast of the United States is facilitated through the Panama Canal, giving it an edge over the others, other ports such as Portland or even Seattle. The Port of Los Angeles provided support such as shipping and shipbuilding operations during World War II. Containerized cargo came to the port in 1950, in the 1950s, facilitating loading, sealing, and shipping on vessels, railroad cars, and trucks. Containerization is important is an important element for the innovation in logistics and security that propelled the Port of Los Angeles to critical national importance. Today, the Port of Los Angeles is the number one port by container, volume, and cargo value. It is the leading gateway for trade between the U.S. and uh, Asia. The port and supply chain provides outstanding cargo conveyance through modernized and big ship ready marine terminal facilities. The largest workforce of skilled longshore workers warehouse that meet the needs of every shipper. And the nation's largest and newest dredge fleet and rail connection that offer frequency and speed to market access to major freight hubs across the U.S. Today, the port handles nearly $270 billion worth of cargo annually and 176 million metric revenue tons of cargo. It also includes eight container terminals. Uh, now, I'll be, I'll be showing two videos, one of them showing a, a new logistic maneuver uh, by the city of Los Angeles to optimize the transporting of cargoes in coming into the port by the city of Los Angeles. Welcome to the Port of Los Angeles, the busiest container port in the Western Hemisphere. Over the past 150 years, our port has evolved to become North America's gateway of connectivity. As the western capital of the United States, the northern capital of Latin America, and the eastern capital of the Pacific Rim, Los Angeles is America's center for international trade, a global model of innovation, security, and sustainability. Welcome to America's Port. 
The Port of Los Angeles is the busiest container port in the Western Hemisphere. Breathtaking in size, 7,500 acres, 43 miles of waterfront, 27 terminals, 270 berths, more than 100 container trains in and out of the LA Basin daily, 88 container cranes, nearly a billion dollars of cargo per day, 22 million local consumers, the largest contributor in America's number one customs district, almost $300 billion in annual trade. Continuously improving upon efficiency, speed to market, reliability. The caravan of cargo never stops. As the gateway to connectivity, the Port of Los Angeles has committed hundreds of millions of dollars to ongoing capital improvements. Main channel depth of 53 feet, big ship ready, and serving the largest vessels in the Trans-Pacific trade. Progressive terminal and backland improvements. Continually advancing future technology. America's largest warehouse and distribution center portfolio with over 1.8 billion square feet of warehouse space. Expediting goods to 14 major U.S. freight hubs. By water, by rail, by truck. Goods movement through the LA Trade Gateway is fast and efficient. Supporting the cargo trade that moves through the nation's busiest container port requires the most skilled, efficient, and reliable labor force. A longshore workforce over 14,000 strong, moving millions of containers a year. Fast ship turn times, efficient and expedient on-dock rail, reliable and professional truck drivers. World-class leadership at the Port of Los Angeles, delivering customers' needs for tomorrow, today. The Port of Los Angeles is recognized as an international leader in maritime safety and security. A dedicated port police force of over 100 officers. A maritime law enforcement training center. Sophisticated threat detection. Dive teams. Canine units. 24-hour patrol and surveillance. Offering on-the-water counter-terrorism training. An always learning philosophy keeps the waterfront safe and secure around the clock. The Port of Los Angeles is at the forefront of environmental change in the port and maritime industries. Catalyst for green technologies. World leader in shoreside power for cargo and cruise ships. Significant air and water pollution reduction. World's first clean truck program. Pioneer of sustainability, social responsibility, and environmental stewardship. The LA Waterfront, an emerging international destination, a perfect place to play, dine, shop, and explore. Award-winning parks and open spaces, Battleship Iowa, museums, and historical landmarks, public art installations, one of California's premier cruise centers, spectacular waterfront promenades. The LA Waterfront, a feast for the senses, a world of discovery. Always evolving, always improving. The Port of Los Angeles is shaping the future of international trade. This video concerning the Port of Los Angeles We'll uh, talk about the new digital system that uh, they have planned uh, for the port. So now that new digital system will help move goods faster. Currently, the flow of data is slow with uh, details of incoming cargo arriving uh, a mere 48 hours before ahead of the arrival of said ship. So now with this new system, maritime shipping would be digitized so that uh, the information would arrive uh, two weeks prior to uh, the docking of the ship. So now that will help the port and businesses plan better for uh, managing the flows of good through, to, through the facility and out to customers and businesses that 
depend on timely delivery. Uh, here's the video. Enjoy. Two, one. Now at five, the Port of Los Angeles has a new program to help speed up shipping, but unfortunately it doesn't kick in until next year, so it's not going to help with this year's holiday orders. Eyewitness News reporter Annabel Munoz explains how it will work. It's America's largest container port, including furniture, auto parts, and electronics. The Port of Los Angeles took a hard hit following Hanjin Shipping's bankruptcy this summer. Ships were stuck at anchor. Cargo that was on docks was not moving. But officials with the port say it recovered. The Port of Los Angeles just set a record for the month of October, moving the largest amount of containers through the port complex of any port in the Western Hemisphere. And suggest a new program will help adjust to any future fluctuations in the market. As a result of heavy congestion during the winter season in 2014 and 2015, it teamed up with GE Transportation to help deliver goods faster and more efficiently. Typically, ports receive data about inbound vessels about 48 hours in advance of that cargo reaching port. Officials say they will begin digitizing maritime shipping data in a first of its kind portal that will speed things up. With this solution, they'll receive that data up to two weeks in advance, which is really going to unlock a lot of capacity for all the different partners that participate in the supply chain ecosystem. The portal is designed to improve data flow between cargo owners, shipping lines, and other stakeholders. Francisco Uribe with the Home Depot says the program program is promising for the company and consumers. Having this information will allow us to plan ahead to make sure that our distribution centers, not, not, not only our stores, but our distribution centers have uh, the products that customers are looking for, whether it's that, you know, very rare <laughs> copper sink, if you will. The program will begin with a test during the first quarter of 2017. Annabel Munoz, ABC7 Eyewitness News. So for this presentation, I spoke about the Port of Long Beach and the Port of Los Angeles. Now, the Port of Los Angeles is bigger than the Port of Long Beach, but they, the both of them remain two of the busiest and biggest seaports in the United States. Uh, now, what sets those two ports uh, over the others is both of the ports, they are directly connected to railways. Once the sh and uh, they are so once the the containers are docked into port, it is very easy for those containers to be placed up on rail cars or trucks and be moved throughout the country. The second thing is those two ports are directly connected to the freeway. So from port from ship to port to the freeway or to the railroad. That facilitates the transport of the set goods, and those goods are able to make it to their point of destination with no issues, assuming that all the conditions are good as far as traffic or accident. Um, so, and uh, those two ports are located mildly 20 miles from uh, the from LAX, which is the biggest airport in uh, in Southern California, in the area of Los Angeles. So transport to the other point is uh, very, very convenient. Now, let's not forget that in one of the videos, and I, as I said earlier, um, What, what did I say on here again? Um, it was this one. Uh, yeah, connection between once a good once goods arrive at the point of either Los Angeles or the port of Long Beach, uh, once they hit the the trucks or the railways, those uh, those containers, those goods will reach the eastern seaboard much faster than if the ship were to cross the Panama Canal, go onto the Atlantic, and go up to uh, major cities such, uh, such as 
Boston or New York City or Philadelphia. So this is what uh, gives ports like the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of Long Beach um, the edge as far as seaports. So those two ports are very, they are two of the busiest, if not the two busiest seaports in the United States, located in Southern California. And they have a good logistic operations as far as uh, supply chain and uh, the moving of the goods, whether it is coming in or coming out. So those two ports are state of the art. And uh, so far they are the two biggest ports and uh, the two busiest ports in the United States moving billions and billions of dollar every year. So again, I am Valerie Romulus. I was presenting about uh, the Port of Long Beach and the Port of Los Angeles. And uh, thank you for listening.